Hey, welcome back to my Master Talk series. Today we're going to discuss photographing models. And this is for people who are pretty competent in your photography skills. You can snap a half decent picture. And now you're wondering, how do I get into working with models and doing more model-based photography? This video is for you. I'm also going to be taking you to a model shoot I did just for this video, where I worked with a first-time model, and I'm going to talk to you about how to get the most out of somebody who's never really modeled before, as well as discussing some of my photographic process and thoughts, as well as a little bit of uh, post, I still say darkroom, Photoshop some of my post work too. So if you wanna see that stuff and skip the whole front part here about how to find models, you're, if you're here mostly to learn how to photograph people better for your family and friends, go to the time code you see here and that's where I'll be talking about the photo shoot I did. Okay, so if you're still here, that means you're interested in where to find models, how to approach models and how to work with models. So the first thing is where to find models. And uh, two best sites to know for that are one's called One Model Place and the other one is called Model Mayhem. And they're great sites. You make an account, you sign in as either a photographer, a model, you can also sign as a stylist, you can sign in as a makeup artist, as a, a retoucher, there's a huge category of uh, photographic skills you can sign in as. And then you have to put up a small gallery, a uh, small portfolio, usually four to five photos it used to be to qualify. So I recommend photographing your family or friends, finding someone you can photograph, and uh, so you can build up the four or five shots that get you uh, into the site in the first place. And then once you're there, uh, look around, you'll find all different scale levels of, of models there. Uh, and you can actually even start searching based on anything you want. Height, hair color, eye color, every parameter is there. So if there's something specific you're looking for uh, for a specific shoot, you can go find the ideal model you want. Uh, but in your case, if you're new at photographing models, you pretty much have two choices. Choice one, if you have some extra money, you can hire a model on these sites. And you can put a casting call out and say this is paid work. Uh, and find out what they want. You'll get a lot of responses back by models. You can tell them what city you're in and what radius away from that city you're looking to find models in, which is a great resource. And then uh, the models will contact you. They'll say, hey, I saw your casting call. My rate per hour is blank. Uh, let me know if you're interested. If you don't have extra money to try and hire models from these sites, uh, what you can do is they call TFP or Time for Prints Photography. And what that means is no money changes hands either way. The photographer, you, uh, use your skills and your gear in exchange for the model's time, looks, and wardrobe, and you team up and collaborate and you get the shots you want. And in the end, the model gets more shots for his or her portfolio, and you get shots for your book, and everyone walks away happy. So I recommend starting off TFP, Time for Prints, and look around for models who are new or models just looking to uh, expand their look. Also, start thinking about what kind of photographer you want to be when you do model photography. Um, my main influences are always uh, Vandy Fair, Vogue, GQ. Uh, my two favorite photographers of all time are actually Annie Leibovitz and Chris Buck. I love their work, they're great. And I also draw inspiration from other places too, like I love the music videos of Mark Romanek and David Fincher. And if you don't know who Mark Romanek or David Fincher are, uh, I'm sure you know their work from their music videos, mostly from the 90s, they were huge in the 90s. Um, but check them out and discover who you want to be. And it doesn't, it's not a bad thing to have people you look up to and styles look up to. And I actually have a number of Pinterest boards I do, and I'm always pinning interesting photographs or things, so I go back and look at it later. Um, I also have a whole Pinterest board of model poses, and I also have another board of model wardrobe. And sometimes I share those with the models and say, hey, uh, here's what I'm looking for, and here's the kind of outfits I like. If you're anything like this, let me know. Um, and it's, it's good to do that. It's going to be sort of a public board so you can work with the model and have an idea of what you're looking for. Okay, one last caveat to Model Mayhem and One Model Place is these are not dating sites. These people are not here to hook up or meet you or fall in love. And I've heard so many horror stories from models about people who seem to think One Model Place and Model Mayhem are, are dating sites. They're not. Just be professional and up front. Okay, so once you contact the model and you're gonna set up a shoot, uh, I also recommend going online and looking for a model release form. You can find these free online in places. It's just a document that covers you legally uh, with the model that says things like, the model's aware you're taking their photograph. The model's aware you'll be showing their photograph. The model isn't under any exclusive uh, deal with an agency to not allow you to take these photographs. And then I've also added uh, writers on things like this will be time for prints if it's something like for this video where it's not a paid job. Um, and that way someone can't come back later and say, hey, you promised me $1,000 to shoot, you never paid me. You can say, no, I have my model release form right here and it says this was time for prints and you agreed and here's your signature. And 
it tends to weed out the, the nuts and the wackos that you'll sometimes meet uh, on these sites, which there's the occasional bad nut. They're mostly great people, but occasionally you get somebody who is a red flag. And I always say, if you see a red flag, drop them, just move on, don't deal with them if they want to ever send you any kind of uh, messages that are like that. Okay, so now you have gone on these sites, you see your portfolio, you have set up a shoot uh, with the model. So let's go shoot. Let me show you a shoot I did recently of a model uh, out here and I'll talk about working with that model and I'll talk about some of my photographic process and post-processing. So let's go uh, check out the shoot. Okay, so here we go. So this photo shoot was a photo shoot I put together just for this video. Um, I shot this a couple of days ago and I found this model. She's a first time model, but she was very interested in getting some really great photographs of herself for her family album, for her social media. And so we talked and we set the shoot up. So this is shot outdoors. I like to shoot around golden hour a lot for beauty stuff. And if you've never heard the term golden hour before, it's when the sun is just starting to set. I like to work within the last three hours. So I recommend uh, finding out when your local sunset is and shoot for a three hour window around there. I've noticed that even though she was a first time model, any time I shoot with any model, except for when a very high end or for a client specifically, a lot of times the models sort of need a warming up period to get into the zone. And so what I tend to do is I tend to do what I call dialing it in, where I get my camera and I get my strobe out or whatever I'm working with, and I start sort of hunting for the angle and the shot, and I start sort of taking a bunch of shots. I tell the model, hey, relax, we're gonna ease into this. This is just to get my levels and my f-stop and my shutter speeds all where I like them to be. And so while you're dialing it in, you can help them start working on their poses. And like I said, if you're totally new to this, I recommend getting a Pinterest board together and going through the kind of photography you want to do. Now, I gravitate towards a lot of high fashion editorial work. So like I said, Vanity Fair, Vogue, those are my, those are my touchstones. So in Pinterest, I tend to look at Vanity Fair and Vogue photographs. And I make boards of looks and poses and ideas that I like to kind of go back to later and think about when I'm going to do a shoot. So while I'm dialing in the shot, I'm kind of discussing with her how to pose, maybe how to look. I to discuss, you know, how to hold her hands. A lot of times, one of my very first rules is I, I start off no smiles. You know, no smiles, you have them, have them emote with their eyes. Have them use their eyes to look at you, to think about things. And I work off that. I tell them to have different thoughts that are important to them to get them to evoke with their eyes more than a big, big cheesy grin. That's not to say smiles and laughter aren't great for photographs. I've used those also to great effect in their shots. But for this one, you know, no smiles. You know. Also, it's I have them look around. I'll, I'll say, hey, look three quarters that way. Look, turn profile. And as I'm dialing in the shots, I'm getting a sort of preview of the poses, looks, and ideas that I like. So one of the things I think is really important is when you do shoot at golden hour and you're shooting model photography, have the model with their back to the sun. You want the sun behind them. And this is a couple of reasons. One, with their face and shade, you can control how bright or dark you want. You can pull what details you want out with a strobe or by just exposing up if you want or by shooting a bracket of shots. So you can get everything from a low exposure to a high exposure and then in Photoshop, layer and paint away what you want and don't want. Uh, I'm using a strobe here, which I'll show you in a minute. And I have her back to the sun and then I simply dialed in my shot and started shooting away and trying different things. I get a lot of shots. I mean, I shoot hundreds of photographs in a session because I just keep going. I say, you know, look left, look over your shoulder, look back at me, you know, and I just get a whole myriad of looks and poses right there in one setup. So this is the first shot in this series that we did. And I think it turned out really beautiful. So now let me show you what I was dealing with when I was shooting this because you might think, oh, what an idealistic photograph, what an idealistic condition it was. Okay, so here you can see what I was actually dealing with on the shoot and you can see uh, where the model is. The sun is kind of over her shoulder to her back and I'm using sort of a generic pocket wizard strobe setup. And the brand I'm using is actually uh, Yongnuo. I'm gonna put the spelling up here because I'm sure I'm butchering it. I think it's a Korean brand. And what I like about it a lot is I'm using a YN560-TX uh, manual flash controller is what it's called. That's what's on the camera itself. And on the back of that flash emitter, I can dial up to three different strobes, an A strobe, B strobe, and C strobe. I'm only using an A strobe here, which is the one I'm holding in my hand. And from the emitter, I can dial up the brightness and uh, distance to flash to use. So I can kind of tell if I want it brighter, darker, how to use it. And this is how I shoot 
the majority of my location model shoots. Uh, I used to have like a speed light strobe on a tethered cord to the camera and eventually I just went wireless. And just so you know, the flashing I'm using is that brand again, uh, Yong Nuo, I, I'm sure I'm butchering it. I'll put the spelling up here for you. It's a Speedlight YN560 uh, Mark IV. And I got these on Amazon and they're pretty affordable. They're very affordable compared to other more name brand ones and they have yet to fail me. They work fantastic. I've had no problems with them the past couple of years. So as you can see here, uh, she's not wearing her shoes, her uh, heels, she's in flip flops. And you can see that we're working on this sort of dirt road for stability with the sort of grasses behind her. And I'm only bringing this up because now I wanna talk about the next shot and something you may or may not think about in your photography. Okay, so back to the, back to the photograph. Um, almost all the photographs you're gonna do are gonna use some kind of post love. And if you don't have Photoshop, get Photoshop and start learning the basics of Photoshop. I use the clone tool to kind of stamp out things like, she had some tan lines on her upper body. I remove those in post. And then sometimes you don't get the most idyllic location you want to shoot in. And in this case, you saw her standing by the dirt road with the grass and the dirt road wasn't the prettiest thing to look at. So here's some Photoshop of the dirt road area at the bottom of that photograph you're just looking at. And we're going to focus on this area down here. And if I turn off the magic, there's the dirt road. That was in the initial photograph that I had. But I took the grass area and I built this sort of cloned block of grass. And then I simply cut out her dress using the path tool over here, the pen tool. And it's very simple. You just sort of click and go. And then if you want to adjust the busy, hit Alt. And then click again, adjust it, hit Alt. Click again, adjust, hit Alt. And I pretty much, I just made a path all the way through. Um, and the path looks like this. There you go. And I just cut out this area and made it its own layer and then planted it back over. And that gave me a nice clean grassy area as you can see in the finished photo. And it just, it's more appealing to look at. So you'll sometimes have to photograph and uh, you have to clone out things in a photo that don't work. You know, you can find a great location. It could be a ugly garbage can or, you know, other things, graffiti or something that you don't want in the photo. And you just have to do your post and clean up and post. So that's a, that's a message you guys to definitely learn uh, things like the path tool, the clone tool, so you can make the most of your photographs and make them as beautiful as possible. And then yes, you know, smiling is good. Occasionally you have to find the right shot. Once again, her back is to the sun at golden hour and it just makes for the best looking shots uh, I, I can do for beauty. I recommend maybe a lower f-stop, maybe like an f2, so you can get a bit of that nice juicy out of focus bokeh behind her and make it feel a little more ethereal on the background. And then we also did a second location. Location two, we moved down near the water. It's all in the same area. You can see the windmills in the background there. And then same rules apply. Back to the sun or side of the sun so I can control the general lit area. Once again, you see how we get those beautiful highlights in her hair, they're all lit up. And once again, it's windy as hell, super windy. Um, so I'd use a high, high, high uh, shutter, shutter speed. Um, I'm cracking up a bit here because she was mentioning her eyelashes were blowing off, which, which is awful, but you know, that's how windy it was. It gets pretty windy out here, but you know, I like these sort of locations. They're a bit more remote and a bit more, you know, natural. Um, as you can see here, the tree is covered in graffiti and people carving things into it that I had to use the stamp tool to clone out. So let's see what these shots look like, shall we? And here's the first. So as you can see here, you know, I had to uh, use the path tool and clean up the tree. It was full of graffiti, big mess. And then I also ended up doing a very similar trick to what I did with the dress earlier, and I'll show you that here. So uh, I didn't like the quality of depth of field I was getting in the background. I didn't like you seeing as much of the reservoir in this one as there was. Um, so I did the same thing. I did the path tool. You can see here, here's where I slipped my pen tool, went around, made a path. Um, and then I went in and I just simply used a lens blur and I just sort of uh, made the bokeh, the out of focus area, a little more dramatic. And then I would use um, the soften tool uh, the blur tool at like a very light strength, like 7% strength, and just sort of go around the edge of the path so you don't get any kind of harsh lines on where you cut out the edge of the tree here. And the same thing was done in the area under her elbow over here, uh, behind her, same thing, so that, that way the out of focus would feel uh, the same. So I actually pathed this out, same exact thing, made the out of focus feel a little more dramatic in that regard. You know, you always do some pose, so if you don't have Photoshop, get Photoshop. And then the one last shot here, once again, same rules apply. I did not adjust the bokeh in this one, but I did have to paint out any kind of marring on the tree. And cool palette tone, clean up on her. 
And it's just a great way of working. So you see here that, you know, the strobe uh, fills in what I want nicely. I don't go with heavy strobes. I don't go with blasting in your face, heavy strobes. I mean, from time to time I do, but I just kind of want to control the light in these situations once we have our rim light or the sunlight fixed. So that's it. That's a basic intro to model photography. First time models. She was great. You know, shook, direct, took direction well. Um, I knew enough poses and ideas to walk her through that. But if you're, if you're new to that, like I said, go to Pinterest, start making boards on things you like and go from there. So I wish you guys luck in working with models. Hope this was helpful. If you have any topics you want me to cover in the future, comment, let me know. All right. Well, hey, thanks for coming. I always, always appreciate spending time with you. I love the fact that you guys are enjoying these videos and you're commenting and engaging with me. And I will see you guys soon. All right, hope you have a great, great uh, summer. It's beautiful out. Get out there and take some photos. All right, see you soon.